Hello and welcome to Lord Fett Gaming Plays Bars Gate 3. I'm your host, Lord Fett. In this uh, Bars Gate 3 video guide, I'll show everybody on how to defeat Grim, the uh, boss at the Amantite Forge. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more Bars Gate 3 guides and builds just like this. So, I'm going to go ahead and give the lowdown on this boss fight from on how the boss strengths and weaknesses works, how the boss, of course, uh, attacks you, also, uh, how the entire boss fight mechanics works also. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is go over our Emni Grim. Here are Grim Vitals, so Grim boss stats. Race, obviously a construct. In other words, most likely a large race as you see before you. Hit points, 300 hit points on the two difficulties. Now if you're playing Tactician, that's 450 hit points. Armor class, aka AC, is 20. Now when it's superheated, that drops down to 18. It's immune to all attacks when not superheated. However, when you do superheat the boss, it's weak to thunder, cold, force, and blunt weapons. You can use slash and such, but use those type of uh, damage, of course. Ranged weapons are okay against it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about Grimm's attacks. Here's the deal about Grimm. Attacking and hitting Grimm last will always be the prime target. This is more of a defense mechanism, but it's very important I list it. Prime target means Grim always attacks you until another party member attacks. So uh, we'll talk about that on how to uh, counter it or so or abuse it. Quake, uh, 3d4 blunt damage. It does. It attacks all near the boss. This is AoE damage nearby. So whoever's nearby, yeah, uh, one or uh, two or more will take damage. Slam, uh, uh, this does 4d8 plus 7 blunt damage, single attack. Now, both Quake and Slam have to make uh, strength saves or become prone. In other words, you'll be knocked down. So, uh, those are the attacks that Grim does. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over on next is how to set up for the boss fight. So, first of all, when we prepare for the, for the boss fight, you want everybody split up. So, we're going to go ahead and position our uh, pullers. So, you want to make sure your pullers are exactly on this uh, mold. So, let me uh, go ahead and do that and then freeze frame and explain about it more. You see the position where I have our two pullers at? This is where we're going to pull the boss towards the uh, middle. Now if you have Warlock, their Eldritch Bolt, well guess what? It could push back the boss. Any uh, pushback attacks that pushes the boss towards the middle is a great idea. Any uh, smite, like for example, uh, one of them that does push back the boss, great idea to uh, use that. Now a uh, key is to keep the boss in the middle, especially when the uh, lava is uh, flowing. So let's uh, go ahead and talk about the... Uh, next spot where one of our party members should be at. The uh, next spot we're going to talk about after I get my pullers all set up is the forge lever spot. This is really important because uh, this is the uh, weapon we're going to go ahead and use against the boss. Let me uh, go ahead and finish that and then uh, position of course our uh, I should say uh, forge lever character. So we select the shout heart. I feel like she's the perfect candidate for it. So we're going to go ahead and get her over there and I'll talk about why you should definitely uh, use her at this uh, very uh, spot. So here we go. Now the spot I have Shao Heart at will actually be our weapon. So when the boss is superheated and in the middle with the lava, guess uh, what? We uh, pull the lever, the hammer drops down in the middle, and of course the boss will take at least 100 hit point damage. The lowest cap's 100, that's probably on Tactician difficulty. Any other difficulty, like for example, I'm playing Balance, that'll be about 130 or 140. This is a great weapon to use. So after, you, of course, you uh, use the hammer on the boss, then you have to do the next thing. Also, I'm going to go ahead and note this also. Have a healer here because uh, this way the healer can start healing, of course, the two pullers. So let's go ahead and talk about the Lava Vow. Our fourth and final party member, for instance, we're using Asteron by the Lava Valve. This is very important for him to be at this spot. The reason being is uh, very simple. This will actually help you damage the boss. As far as the uh, Forge Lever is important, this is also equally important. Reason being is the lava flows, the boss will have the superheated debuff. That means you could damage the boss. No lava, the boss is basically immune unless you do some kind of special thing like you saw in shorts, but still. The boss will be immune if you do not let the lava flow. This is very important. So 
after you lay the hammer down each time, you got to make sure that lava flows. So that's why we have one character at the uh, lever, two pulling, and one uh, keep that lava flowing. This will also start the boss fight. So do not start until everybody is in position. So let's uh, skip ahead to the start of the boss fight, and I'll break everything down from here. When the uh, boss does start, the fight will begin. The room will fill up with lava. So first thing you want to do... Uh, of course, since uh, the lever user is not doing anything, it's to cast Fairy Fire. This uh, debuff is very nice. If you could get it landed, the boss will be debuffed, which is good. Make sure you are, uh, I say, healer or anybody else able to cast as far away from the boss as possible. What we're going to go ahead and uh, do now is uh, I'm going to damage the boss and show you how much damage you could do. I'm going to go ahead and, since he's superheated, use some Ice Arrows. And, uh, okay, I uh, missed on uh, that. But that's quite all right. Boss isn't going after uh, a Steron. Now these other two must make sure they do the damage. So we're going to go ahead and uh, have some fun with some ranged weapons. So I'm going to have my uh, Paladin uh, shoot some uh, range. And uh, there you go. Threat assessment. Prime target has been activated. Fenton is now the target. However, I could do some damage. Last attacker always does the damage. So I'm going to go ahead and do this bolt also. You see the boss is getting damage, which is uh, very good. So uh, this round... You want to make sure uh, Grim definitely comes over to you. Very important. So Grim's now all ticked off. So what we're going to do still is uh, toss some damage if I need to. Toss some heal. So I'm going to go ahead and use Sunbeam since it's Radiance damage. Uh, make sure you don't hit Asteron with that. Now uh, the boss will uh, go for, uh, I should say, Shadow Heart. But we're going to fix that. During this round still since uh, Super Heat is now uh, two debuffs. We'll be able to do damage. There you go. Uh, now we're going to uh, do some damage with the other two. Their turn is up. I'm going to have our pullers do the damage. So I'm going to have a uh, lightning against this boss. See how much damage I could do. And uh, there. We uh, did some nice uh, damage. So the boss is now coming this way. So in the next round we'll uh, be able to uh, do so. So let me uh, go ahead and do that again. And uh, hit the boss. So far so good. It's about almost uh, 250 hit points. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, pull the boss towards us. The boss should be coming at any uh, second now. This should end the boss debuff soon. And yep, see, the boss is now walking to us. So let's uh, go ahead and get ready for the hammer fall, I call it. Uh-oh, lava's gone. And it, of course, has 246 uh, hit points. So first of all, you need to do is the lava bow puller does his job or her job. Second, the uh, forge lever person just go ahead and pulls the uh, lever. Just watch the uh, damage. I'll freeze it there. Now, it did over 100 hit point damage. So, in other words, uh, the boss will be prone leastly for one round. And you uh, guessed it. The boss is now in serious pain. So, let's talk about the next phase and how to deal with it. Now, because you uh, did... Uh, 100 hit points left on the boss or under. In my case, it's 97 exactly. The, uh, I should say, the uh, Memphs come into play. The Magma Memphs. So, what they do is they do uh, melt it against you. So, in other words, yeah, you'll take fire damage. So, the ideal healer here is to get through this round until the little buggers come into play. So, we're going to get through this round real quick. Unfortunately, the boss is no longer heated. So, we're going to have to uh, end our turns or attempt to do some uh, damage. So let's go ahead and end that and get the little buggers to fight us. Now by then the boss will be up. Good news is, is uh, we're focused firing of course against the boss. Let me uh, go ahead and toss a few of those or I'll uh, try to do ranged weapons. Yeah, okay, yeah, thrust assessment. Now I'm the prime target. This is good. Make sure the middle people are still the targets. At this point, try to take out the uh, little buggers out ASAP. So. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, select which character I'm going to do that first. And uh, make sure you don't use any uh, pure fire weapons. That's a bad idea. Let me uh, try that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and have our uh, cleric uh, prone the boss. So uh, this way you could focus on you uh, guessed it. The, uh, I should say, is the uh, Mimps. Let me uh, hit that. Nothing's going to happen. I don't think he's in the lava. That's all right. We'll uh, deal with that. So at this round, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say is... If the boss is in prone position, we're going to take out, of course, those little buggers. So there's a total of four of them on the battlefield. And let me uh, get some arrows to uh, do that. And I'm going to do an arrow asset. That's going to be uh, doing good, 8 to 23. That should be enough to uh, take them down. Unfortunately, Asteron has my ice ones. Yeah, one's down. The other one's uh, about to uh, die. So let me uh, go ahead and make sure the other one uh, dies a horrible death. 
Let's shoot it. And there we go. It's uh, down. So that's half of Maria down. I might have to uh, let both of them come to us. It will be easier for us to take care of. Counter spell them so this way they don't cast that melted stuff on you. I should say uh, heat metal. Which means you have metal, you'll uh, take more uh, damage. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, wheel this one down. Take out the mems and have some fun doing so. Yep, see, we're already uh, taking out the little buggers. And the yellow one should be coming. And let me do another counter spell. Unfortunately, I'm going to use my warlock slots, but the little buggers won't bug us ever again. Now it's going to fly, which is going to be enough for us to uh, do some damage. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Cleave on my uh, main character and have uh, Grim come towards us exactly. Now, uh, the uh, Quake Attack, the uh, Magma Mems won't be affected since it's flying. Okay, unfortunately, Fairy Fire is gone, so we're going to go ahead and uh, have some fun. Let me get a Steron, get that Lava going now since it's very important to do so at this point in the phase. And there you uh, go. Lava's flowing. We're going to stay there. And yep, and now uh, the boss should be hopefully overheated. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, get the uh, Cleave Attack ready. And unfortunately, I don't see that there. Nope, none the boss, but I'm going to focus on taking the little buggers out since they are really annoying. And let me uh, go ahead and do uh, this too since I'm going to be resting next time. And there we go. The, uh, they're gone. We got one more. Then I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip to the last part, which is actually uh, going ahead and uh, show everybody on what happens if you repeat the next uh, phase after the mimps. So let me uh, make sure uh, that's fine. I'm trying to look for anything else to attack. Okay, I can't use fireballs. That's uh, useless. I can't use my mace. So let me try the hammer so this way the boss gets hit. Okay, boss is hit. We're going to keep it in the prone position so we can focus on the mimps. At this point, try to keep the boss down until those little buggers are gone. And there you go. Let's try to do uh, another one of those. Big mistake. We got about, I believe, about two left to kill, and that should do it. There, one down and one to go. So we're all set up. And let me see if I can get the other one uh, dead. Let's uh, go ahead and see if uh, the little bugger will uh, go. Boss should be uh, getting up after this. Uh, yeah, it should be getting up now. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, at this point kill the last one. Then I'll talk about the last part of the fight. So let's uh, destroy it. First, let's get our stair on. Once again, uh, get the lava flowing. Hopefully the boss is definitely on it. Let's end the turn there. Uh, unfortunately, it's not yet. So let me uh, go ahead and take the little guy out. And there you go. After some repositioning, I'm going to have to do is get the uh, lava flowing. So at this point, this is a perfect spot where the boss is at. Boss is between, of course, the pullers and the uh, circle thing in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and still uh, try it. Okay, we can't push it. So instead, we're going to attack like normal. Let's see if I can do a normal attack. Okay, not much, but still good enough to uh, get the boss in a perfect spot. I'm going to have uh, Shadow Heart pull the lever, and the boss should be toast after that. There you go. 134 damage it is done. So I'm going to go ahead and give some final advice uh, before I do end the uh, video. Very important. Make sure you know the boss's strength and weaknesses. Force, thunder, and cold plus blunt weapons when the boss is superheated. So uh, when the battle starts, make sure you have uh, someone at the lava vault at all times. Make sure you have one person at all times, of course, using the lever. And then uh, make sure your pullers, too, are on the mold thing, so this way they pull the boss towards the middle. You want to make sure the boss is constantly overheated, thanks to the lava. And then when the boss is in the middle, just uh, go ahead and, of course, uh, pull that lever. Now, when the boss is under 100 hit points, take out the uh, magma mimps. Once that happens, resume the uh, pulling and keeping the boss in the middle. Use anything that pushes the boss back towards the uh, middle. Now, if the boss is in between you and the... Uh, Hammer thing in the middle, you got this. Keep on uh, repeating the process of lava and the lever when the boss is in the middle until his hit points are all gone. This is it for my Baldur's Gate 3 How to Defeat the Grim Boss Fight video guide. This is Lord Fenton signing off. Thank you for watching and have a great day or night and do please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more classic and modern Dungeons and Dragons walkthroughs, builds, guides, and more just like this. If you like what you see, then uh, go ahead and pick my suggestion on the upper left-hand corner or YouTube suggestion on the bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and relax in this nice chair.